Welcome everyone. Just remember before we get started, if you want to download the project links, it will be down below in the description. Just all you got to do is enter your email and it's completely free. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we'll be continuing our bore, making the attacks uh, work both ways. So we'll implement the death animation as well and, and such. So, okay, let's continue from the attack detector. So if you guessed, uh, yeah, you probably guessed right, hopefully, that we need to connect the body entered for our attack detector and body exited. Now, the reason being the body exited is because we need to move back to chasing, right? When I leave my attack, I need to move out of the chasing attack, right? Now for the entered, this is where I would enter the attacking state, right? Okay, now for the attack state, uh, what we'll do is, that is pretty much it actually, I think, right? We just have the vector at zero and we play the attack. So this should be it. So now if we play and I go close, he ends up attacking. Now that might be a little too uh, far. So maybe let's make the circle a little smaller here. Like that. And now if I try again, I have to be a little closer. Uh, and you know what? Maybe let's make this guy, this collision, a little smaller as well, since our body itself is not actually even that big. Now if we try again, it looks a little cleaner. Okay. Now we need to actually do the uh, hit, right? Because what about the actual hit? Well, what we'll do is in the bore, we'll create a new uh, or another area 2D. So this will be the hit detector. Uh, so here we'll need a collision shape. And that collision shape will be a rectangle. And what we'll do is we'll zoom in here and make this around this size like so, so it fits the actual attack. Uh, maybe a little smaller here. Let's actually maybe go over here and play it. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe a little smaller like that, and that should be good. Okay, now for the attack detector, we don't need body exited, we only need body entered. So we'll connect this, and in here, we can again, just check to see if it's the player. And if it is, this is actually quite easy. We can just say hit, and then pass through a damage variable. Now we'll create a damage variable. Actually, maybe we'll put it up here. We'll say variable damage int equals three, for example. Now he'll do three damage to our player. So now if I hit play, uh, what we'll do is we, we will print the health of the player. So we'll say print health over here. So we'll have a physics process function being printed. And now, oh, uh, let's check the other side. Okay, so it does work, but it doesn't work perfectly. So what we need to do is we need to turn it on and off, just like we did for the player. Now, we don't have an attack animation for here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something a little cheeky. Now, if you if you set up an animation player, that's totally fine. It's probably better that way and it's easier. Now, what we're going to do is something a little uh, scammy, I would say. So we're going to connect the sprite frames change in the player here or in the monster. And what we'll say is first we will check uh, if we're actually in the attack animations first. So we'll say if current state is equal to uh, mob state attacking, then we will ask if anim.frame is equal to one, then we will say uh, hit detector dot disabled equals true or false. Sorry. Now this hit detector, we need to create a variable, an on ready variable to load the area 2D. So we'll say hit detector is equal to uh, get node, get node, and we will get the hit detector like so. And now we have this, but we need to disable it at some point. So uh, let's make sure that we duplicate this and we can also put two. And then if it's two, we'll disable it. So every time this changes, if I go over here to frame one, I'm going to enable it and then I'm going to disable it on the second frame. Okay, so now if I play, if it plays its attack, it should. Okay, well, so it does work in terms of attacking, uh, but might just not show the disabled. Let me double check that I'm using the right one. 
Okay, I just realized we did connect the wrong frame. We need to the frame change, not sprite frame change. Sorry about that. So let's connect this one. Just copy paste the code though. Now we can delete that and we can disconnect that old signal. So let's disconnect that and try again. Okay, so we got an error here. What is this it's saying? Uh, oh, okay, so we need to connect or auto load the collision shape. That's why. All right. So now that should work properly. So if I hit play, now you can see it's being enabled and then disabled. Okay, awesome. So that pretty much works pretty nicely. Now what we need though, is we need a uh, another function for this guy called hit. Similarly, just like our player, right? And just like that, our player, we will pass through a damage amount and we'll take our health minus equal damage and we can actually just go to our player and copy paste the code if you'd like. So I'm gonna copy all of it. I'm not 100% sure if we'll use all of it. But here, instead of this, obviously, what we'll do is we will say uh, current state is equal to death, right? Now let's copy this because we're gonna use that in just a second. Now here, we don't have a dying, so we're gonna delete that. And then health, we need to add. So let's add that at the top. We'll say variable health int equals, let's say five. Okay, now in the depth, we have this play depth, but we also want to await the animation player until it's finished. And then once it's finished, what we'll do is queue free. Okay, so now we can just queue free once it's done. Uh, we can delete this right here. And let's set the velocity to zero over here. That should be good. So let's try this and test it out. So let's go over here. Now you can see that he's attacking. And if I hit him, I just killed him in one hit. So maybe I might want to reduce the damage of my player. Uh, ooh, I don't have damage, so we need to actually add it and say int damage equals two. And over here in the in this guy, we'll say body dot hit, and we'll pass through the damage of our player. Now, if I hit play and I try this one more time, I think I should have to hit him several times for him to die. And there we go. Awesome. We now can kill a monster. So that's actually pretty neat. So, okay. Um, now what we can do is in our bore animation or our, sorry, our bore AI, we need to switch the position of the actual uh, attack thing, right? So this, this thing needs to switch on the other side. And this is actually pretty easy because I, we already have that. We have it right here. So all we need to do is get our hit detector and say dot position is equal to vector two. And we'll say 14.75 and negative uh, seven. Now we'll do the same thing, but for this side, but then negative 14. Uh, I think this one should be negative and this one should be positive. This is the right side, right? Okay, so now let's test this and see if it works. All right, now you can see that it, it reverse on the other side and it does work and I can die. Awesome, this looks pretty good. Okay, now obviously we're not done. Our game uh, is not complete, not done everything yet, but we have a good start. Uh, in the next lecture, or in the next video, we'll get started on our world itself. So we'll, you know, we have our tile map, but we'll actually get it to work. We'll put some things in it and we'll fill it up a little bit. So we'll add some, uh, tiles and animated tiles and stuff and it'll be cool and i hope to see you guys in the next lecture or in the next video <laughs>